Welcome back to RimWorld. So there's been a little bit of advice thrown at me over in Discord about certain mods that don't basically play well together. Certain other mods that would be kind of complementary to what we've got going on. So I've made some adjustments. What I'll do is I'll update the mod list as well. Uh, the sort of rolling sort of load order file that we've got. I'll stick that in the description. For those of you who've already started playthroughs, don't worry. It is save game compatible, the changes I've made. I've removed one of the furniture mods because apparently it doesn't play nice with some of the others. Um, plus we had like fucking four furniture mods anyway, so it didn't matter too much. Not only that, the, uh, what, what was the other one that was fairly important? That I've removed. I don't remember off the top of my head, but I'll, I'll, like I said, I'll update all the changes in the uh, mod load order and I'll drop that in the description this time rather than a pin comment because I know a couple of people were having difficulties finding that because it got buried or something along those lines. Anyway, we're back in Rimworld. So, one of the things I have added to the mod pack is the locks mod, which in theory should let us now lock and unlock doors because apparently prisoners um, weren't able to, uh, so we can set the owners and, and, you know, do sort of that type of thing. But basically, prisoners aren't able to interact with doors otherwise, and they'll just, you know, pick it or knock it down or however they do their usual stuff. So, uh, we'll worry about that later on. I might as well remove all this from the prison, huh? Because they can't stone cut anyway. All we're really doing right now is upsetting the prisoner for absolutely no reason. At least we got like a dedicated prison cell, huh? So let's get all this garbage moved back out. I don't know, somewhere a bit more convenient. Uh, let's put that, let's just put it here for now. That's okay. Um, copy the settings, paste it into there, and then we'll just go ahead and delete that one and haul it all. Because obviously their lower mood is going to make them harder to recruit. And right now their mood is going to be garbage because their bedroom is filled with rocks and such things. Let's also get rid of this, or at least put this back to where we want it to be. Now that spacecraft landing is the best news I've heard all day. So this thing is hopefully, come on, give us plus steel and gold. It's neither. It's steel and it's steel and components. That's terrible. Well, we do need steel and components, obviously, during the early game, but plus steel and gold are what we need for our multi analyzer. Now we're quite far away from our multi analyzer. Oh, one of the other things I removed, I, I remember what it was in hindsight, is the research tree. It was suggested that, especially for learning the mods like Rimfella, Rim Atomics, that what we should do is um, do this basically and have the old sort of research tree where we can much clearly see what we need when we need it as we need it instead. Rim Atomics costs 537. What? What a strange amount, but yeah, it also breaks things up, so it's a little easier to read. I do like the other research tree management one, because obviously you can sort of like, um, you, you can much more easily queue stuff up, and it, it's kind of easy to see what bills give you as well. So we could, in, with the old one, see, okay, well, we can get antiseptic corpses and research in medicine. That's a prime example of why that's useful. We wouldn't have known that otherwise. I, I believe we're basically already do that, through that, right? Either way, what else we got here? Town Charter by Martial Law. So this is the thing I've talked about a couple of um, episodes in a row now. So what this thing does for us is it basically allows us to call in the end game. So we'll get lots of raids from lots of different factions, and if we win, we win. Right, that's it. We, if we complete that, this this huge, huge end game raid, we win. Uh, it's very, very difficult to do that. It's like hugely difficult. Then of course you got the vegetable garden stuff set off as well. It's just a case of learning some of these other ones. When you know this, you could very easily go back to the other research tree mod, which I prefer, and then it'd be a lot more straightforward. But for us, this is probably not a bad idea, seeing as there's a lot of mods I've just never used before, right? Let's crank some speed up. So what are the goals this time around then? Um, I'd like to start working on Castle Jilp. Somebody suggested in Discord that maybe not have so many furniture mods because it's going to look aesthetically odd. I'm fine with using certain aesthetics in certain buildings. We kind of stick mostly to the gloomy mod because it's a vampire playthrough and it looks a bit more thematically appropriate, right? Um, let's also put down this as well. The whole reason we put down a wood floor is to not get this happening. Now, that is the gothic wood floor, isn't it? So let's put that one down instead. Okay. Um, I want to start working on Castle Jump and fill that with furniture. We don't want to, like I said... Every sewer is a form into the trap of kind of half built, half building a base, and then having to tear it down and completely rebuild it, or you know doing something entirely different, you know, completely tearing it down from the ground up and rebuilding all the rooms like we did last series. So I don't want to fall into that again and completely change it. Where's my actual research tree though? Oh, main. There we go. Right. So we are now looking for gunsmithing. So that is machining, isn't it? Yeah, machining, gunsmithing. That's good. Okay, let's go for this one next. I still think this is, for now, a better idea than uh, than going straight for the multi-analyzer or anything. Just because the bullets we get are going to be immediately useful. Like, if we get a significant raid, which we could, because we're playing on a fairly a fairly challenging difficulty, we might have to concern ourselves a little bit with that. I'm not going to crank the difficulty up to the, to the levels we were playing on in the previous series until we've got ourselves off the ground a little bit, because there are a lot of new things to learn here. Simple meal rotted away in storage. Oh my god, I built the coolers but didn't actually cool them. Uh-huh. Yeah, no, that's fantastic. That's that's just fucking great news, right? That's just a real good job there, my friend. This is 10 out of 10. Good God. All right, well, there we go. Problem solved. The only downside is, uh, now we need more goddamn food. <laughs> Jesus. How often have I played this game and I still don't remember the basics, huh? Okay, so, um, let's try this again round two. Let's just go and harvest some garbage for now until uh, some more of our crops have grown. 
I'm just going to designate a whole bunch of stuff, and then we're going to pick on these, what do they expect to go? We'll just select similar, and then cancel the designation for that. There we go. Okay. Um, what are we getting out of that, then? Heal root. Just a shitload of heal. What about that berry bush? Are we? Yeah, okay. So we're going to get a heal root and a little bit of berries. We don't have, like, fish industry or anything like that. As good as that mod is, it's kind of horribly OP, isn't it? If you live by a river, which we are going to because we've got the hygiene mod. They're kind of horribly OP in the amount of food that you can get. We never seem to lack food with those mods. And obviously, we do want a little bit of challenge. We can't just do... Oh, come on. Oh, come on. Good lord. I just want the plastic. Oh, the, the plastic and the other stuff. We might even need to go hunting at some stage as well. Because things are getting kind of dire in regards to the food. How long until our next crop is in? Um, bloody ages. Wow. So the corn and the bamboo are both at 51% grown right now. Yeah, this is going to take a serious amount of time. Don't eat raw... F oh, that's okay. I thought it was raw meat that he was eating. It's just raw berries. Um, what about hunting like... What is it? That's a panda. Can you... Can we eat a panda? Is that legal? Is that allowed? I mean, we just need to eat freaking anything at this stage. Right? And that's only tasty, tasty pandas nearby. We've got some scorpions. Or we've got some geese. Actually, geese aren't too terrible. I think we sent out Jolp with his feral claws and just let him rip apart some... Uh, some animals here and bring them back to base. We do have a boar. I saw a boar that was hunted by a spider. Oh, I think the spider's actually finished it off at this stage. Let's hunt these boys down. Now, has Job got good shooting? 5.82. I still think the claws have got to be better, right? So let's squat him up. Let's move him out and actually do some just manual melee hunting. I know it seems a little bit odd, but it's probably the best thing for it. Especially as Job has that, you know, that those abilities. We might as well bloody use them, huh? Regenerate part. Restores a limb or body lost in combat. Oh, hang on. It is permanent. Oh, awesome. Right. I see, and then we can remove that if we want to. It doesn't affect, well, like manipulation? No, it is permanent by the looks of it. Okay, and then if we want to remove it, we just hit regenerate part, which I assume would be useful for bionics, perhaps? Either way, this could be fantastic. So what do they do, like 14 damage a piece? That's not terrible. Man, I thought it was actually going to die then, huh? Stabbed in the leg by wild boar tusks. Apparently, they're not bleeding. Because he's got no blood? I don't know. Oh, another thing I should point out here. Oh, we can actually do, what's vampiric healing? Using, oh, use... Vite or Vichy or however you want to pronounce that. Right, that's kind of cool. Um, one of the things then, if we feed on Wild Ball Lethal, I mean, we might as well, right? Because it's not going to... What are you doing? Where's he... Where's he going? Oh, uh, he's going to run all the way down to here. Okay, let's keep an eye on this. Oh, he was grabbing some blood from her. I see. Got it. I mean, you could have fed on the ball first. That's okay. Because obviously, okay, I was going to say when the ball, it, we could feed on the ball and then that will kill it. And then we can bring it back to base, right? But I guess it doesn't matter anymore. Okay, go ahead and haul this thing back. We could potentially get Joe to butcher it as well. We're going to do as much manual hunting as possible, I think, during the night. So our guys aren't going to wake up and immediately stop. Oh, God, please get home. Don't burn. Okay, you're fine. Nothing to worry about, Joe. Right, let's get that butchered immediately. Otherwise, uh, they're going to start eating raw flesh here. Where did you get that backpack from, my friend? Where did you steal that from? Oh, I bet, uh, what's her name brought it over? Irasa, who hasn't moved. Uh, bad hygiene, de oh, dehydration, shit, 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 my mistake. Okay, let's actually move this into here then. We are also going to need to plumb that in as well. This plumbing, I'm not going to let go to waste though. So what we could actually do there is build that kitchen sink, which always gives the, uh, what is it, the, the um, cleaning bonus. That seems to be a pretty good shout. Where is that? Hygiene misc, isn't it? Yeah, there we go. Awesome. Let's put this in here. I think it's close to the stove as possible would be the best one, right? Just because that would give uh If we build it close to the stove, that gives a, a cleanly bonus. So do we want to build it just literally as close as possible? Where's the work point for that? Right there. So we could uh, genuinely build it like right basically on top of it right there. Let's give it a go. If that gives a cleanly bonus, it's got to be in a radius around it, right? So we could probably build it a bit further than that. It wouldn't matter. But we'll just make sure that it's going. Um, so actually, we didn't need to build that plumbing over there after all. There we go. Obviously, when we reinstall this, we will. Perfect. Right, you should be fine now. And she can walk. Oh, this is what I wanted to avoid. You shit. Okay. Um, are you my cook? Who is my, who is my cook? You are my cook. Need materials. Okay, there's not actually enough to cook that many meals. Sure. So what we'll do then, if they can't do that, cook forever. Um, or should we cook until we've got eggs? And this is the emergency food. So we'll cook until we've got like, um... I'm going to say like a couple of meals. That's good. Yeah, we've got a couple of meals then as backup as well. And we'll unpause when we've only got like two left, I guess. That's, that's fine. This is our emergency stuff. So if they can't fulfill that bill... What, the way we had it set before, they just won't eat meals. They won't They won't have any meals because they can't fulfill that bill. Whereas this way, you can at least cook two meals, which is obviously better than none. Okay, all, all four meals, apparently. Nice. Okay, much better. There we go. Perfect. Nothing to worry about. Um, we will also get rid of this so they're, they're forced to use the, the actual proper dining room as well because that's kind of a little bit odd with that being there. Okay, Jilp, how are you doing, my friend? Do you not need to heal up with that? 
Yeah, no, he did need to tend it, even though he wasn't bleeding. That's what I meant to talk about as well. So, somebody pointed out that when Jilt was resurrected, the Thirst Bar only existed then, and before that, it wasn't such a big deal. Um, it is kind of a pain in the ass, to be honest, to have to deal with Thirst as well as, obviously, drinking blood. It's not that big a problem, because he doesn't have to worry about food, which is, you know, obviously, that would be the real drawback. That's, that's the bonus to being a vampire. You don't need food, you drink blood. Thirst is kind of annoying. Nothing we can do about that, though, unfortunately. Um, I mean, I could try editing the, the, the save game in between episodes or something like that. But it's not such a huge deal that I'm really that bothered about it. I mean, it's just he's going to have to get a little bit of water every now and again. There's plenty of places. You can do that in almost every room of the, of the base at this stage. So it's not, it's not a big deal whatsoever, in my opinion. Perfect. All right. Are you getting out of bed anytime soon? Oh, he's got bed rest. Uh, yeah, no, let's lower that down. That's, that's literally tis but a scratch. All right, so how are we doing in terms of research, then? Let's just get that done. Honestly, Jilp just sit there and work, my friend. We'll also build him a filing cabinet, which will increase the research speed by, like, 5%. It's not a lot, but it does add up eventually. We haven't got a cloth harvest yet, either, have we? Because with that, we can build the bookshelves, and then the bookshelves obviously give uh, a slight research bonus also. Um, yeah, this stuff, this mod adds a lot of shit, huh? Why have we got two different types of smithy? Oh, fuel smithy, electric smithy, got it. I do like this mod, though, because, it again, it suits the campaign quite a lot. So, bookshelves, we need 120 cloth and 150 wood. That's expensive. Um, each research bench can use two bookshelves. Okay. And what bonus do we get from that? Oh, it doesn't say. Of course it wouldn't. Why would it? Oh, that would make way too much sense, huh? And we can also put down, like, the rugs and things as well, which give a beauty bonus, even if you don't build the floors out of something to get a, a beauty bonus. Actually, I wonder if you could do, like, golden tiles, then put rugs on top of it as well for... for Cumulative beauty. I'll have to test that out at some stage. Okay, Jill. Good luck. Work on, my friend. Work on. This is all down to you right now. So, Rim Atomics and uh, Rim Fella seem to be sort of uh, mods that aim at fleshing out some of the content that just isn't there. So, if we go to Rim Fella here. Um, so you know, you got ways of synthesizing plastics, ways of synthesizing hyperweave. We've got deep wells. What is that for? Oh, larger oil reservoirs. And these all tie into other mods, which is why it's such a cool mod. So each mod is standalone. So obviously you can have hygiene by itself, as we did last series. You can have the Reatomics mod by itself. You can have Rimmerfella by itself. But they all communicate with one another if you enable it in the mod menu. So we can set the Rimmerfella stuff to be cooled by the water that we get from the hygiene stuff, for example. It's quite a nice little combination there. I, I think it, it is altogether obviously fairly nice. These boys are idle again. What can we get you guys to do then? Um, honestly, right now, uh, not a fat lot. Um, I guess just go and mine, huh? We don't really need the stuff to be mined out, but it's better than obviously leaving them just to wander around aimlessly for hours a day. Sure, why the hell not? There we go. Problem solved. Okay. Um, and as long as we designate enough of this stuff, I mean, we've got so much steel and we, we just need plastic and gold. I don't really want to waste too much time doing this step, but that's okay. There you go. You guys have got nothing else to do, so we might as well let them do it. So it's all down to Jilt, really, to get this research done. I suppose we could also set them as backup researchers. No, we can't. They're absolute garbage. Okay, ignore me. We've got zero and one. Wow. We've got a passion in it, though. I mean, the question is, do we want to get more gold and steel? Gold and plasteel. <sighs> What's purple? I don't remember what purple is. Um, Van, you have the highest deconstruct. Get over there, my friend. I don't know if anybody knows this for definite. If you do know, please let me know. Does have, sending someone with a higher construction skill to deconstruct these things give more resources? <gasps> Gold! Nuggets as big as your fist. Van, get that back. Good lord. I mean, you know, it's in the water. It's literally steel in the ocean. I'm pretty sure it's not going anywhere. But that's fantastic. And then multi-analyzer is, is it... It's 50 plus steel, 25 gold. Don't crucify me if I'm wrong on that one, because I don't remember off the top of my head. Something like that anyway. Hey, you know what? That's halfway. I'll take it. Oh, we've started to build up some bones as well. Apparently, uh, one of the comments I saw last episode that said that bones are, like, disgustingly powerful. Like, towards the end game, though, because you need a lot, like, a huge amount of bones to really get the powerful stuff. But when you get there, they are, like, super good. And obviously, they're thematic and they look cool as well. A lot of you have also said, um, another comment in response to what I was talking about last episode with the whole psychopath thing. Whenever we get vampires in the future, just make them psychopaths. Otherwise, they will be freaked out by, like, dead bodies and stuff. So if they lethally drain a human being for their blood, when they do that, they'll get freaked out. So that mechanic sort of plays against itself. I don't know whether that's intentional. Um, it does seem a little bit odd that they would need to lethally drain some of their blood. But then they'd be like, oh, no, there's a dead body there. Better, better be kind of spooked. Did you guys just repair that twice? I don't know if you saw that, but they definitely seem to. So we've got, uh, uh, also added by this one, is like cupboards and tableware shelves. But it did say those only work with fueled uh, stoves. So I, I guess it's just to make it the equivalent of a power stove. Because these things work faster, don't they? Like electric stoves. I don't remember. Van, what is up, my friend? How are you doing? Malnutrition miner. Oh, God, we're still out of food, huh? Right. 
Okay, my mistake. Uh, let's, let's deal with that very quickly, too. Harvest. See, this is where the fishing mob would come in handy, right? We've got no food, so then you'd say, well, okay, shit, we'll just have them doing fishing forever. Right, cancel that. It's not, we don't need any of this, this spec to go garbage. What else? We've got peach trees, which are not grown. Uh, yeah, this is a massive pain in the ass. Okay, let's just get, like, these berry bushes and shit there. There you go. Harvest all. 40 berry bushes. That should do it. Okay. And then Planka is set to hire the mining? It is. Okay, so let's just draft and undraft them. There we go. Go and get yourself some berries. They can eat those raw as well, so it's not such a big deal. There you go. The moods immediately jump back up there. Van's still a little bit sad, I guess, because he ate, what, like, raw mushrooms or something? Oh, he's still hungry. Recreation unfulfilled. Well, that's down to you guys. I'm not going to, like, micromanage you playing your, your horseshoes or whatever, my man. We just need to wait for this cotton. The second this cotton comes in, we can solve so many of our problems. Like the research speed will obviously pick up. The uh, the the recreation we can put down poker tables, pool tables, whatever else. Put down carpets and nice things like that. Machining done. Is can we now make with machining bullets? Does that unlock the loading bench? If that does, it means we can you know go out hunting actively. And then after that, we're, we're set, right? We don't need to worry about anything because that food is our sort of major concern right now. Um, production. Where is that button? Here we are. Uh, loading bench. Yes, we've got it. Okay, awesome. And then these guys don't have to worry about, you know, not having anything to do now because we've also got a loading bench. All right, uh, let's put another chair as well. What about like a workbench? That's not a bad idea. Oh, sorry, a tool cabinet is what I meant there. Probably not a bad plan, huh? Um, put it there. It should be able to reach all three three quite easily, right? We can double check either way. It's not a big deal. Alright, I think we need a little bit more wood too. Oh shit, ball's begun already. What was the growing time on this map? Let me just double check very briefly. Um, information. Excuse me, I need the terrain information. There we are. Um, terrain. The growing time is 30 out of 60 days. Oh god. 6th of September. And how long's our corn got? Oh god, this could be a concern. Um, we're not going to have any food for the winter. Okay. Uh, it's not a big deal. Um, we could build an indoor farm. How much power have we got spare? Really not that much to say that we've got three. Have I not, like, connected them or something? That's something I would definitely do. Let me just double check the wiring on this because that seems a little suspect. Um, no, we are good. Wow. We're just getting very unlucky, I guess, with the power drain. Or these windmills are just being utter garbage. More batteries. That's what we need. We need a couple more of these. And seeing as we've dismantled so many goddamn ships recently, that's probably not a terrible idea. So I think we need a little more wood for this as well. So let's get ammo dealt with as soon as possible. Because that's, you know, kind of high priority so that we can go out hunting and stuff. That deals with the food problem as well and the problem of defense that we've got going on. Uh, Jilp, if you could do with the batteries, because power is apparently also a concern. Oh, God, speaking of which, shit. The unrest band. What has he got equipped there? It's such a, like, a lethal looking club. So it's 4 o'clock. I think sunlight to Jilp becomes lethal at 6. He also moves at the speed of goddamn light. So I'm thinking we just rush him over. Huh? We just we just send this man over here as soon as possible. Run, Jilp. Worst case scenario, he goes and hides in like a mountain or something. Um, in fact, what I'm going to do is preemptively... Are you not assigned to deconstructing, huh? I'm going to preemptively remove this because that's got a roof on it. What's he doing? What the fuck is he doing again? Oh, he's going to drink blood. That is kind of annoying that... Oh, he's just going to sleep. So it's just when the sun comes up, he's like, Yeah, no, I'm not doing anything else now. I'm, I'm good for the day. Where's that enemy gone? What? Where's that enemy gone? <gasps> there they are. Oh, my God. I thought they disappeared off the map then for a second. Um, we should probably squad up. And we should probably uh, get ready for... They've got a club. We've got knives. So all we've got to do is start the bleeding, and then we've got the advantage on them. Where the fuck are they? Okay, right, here we go. Slow. Who are they going for? <coughs> oh, my throat, apparently. Melee attacking Van. Good. So Mal, move a bit closer. Cover the ground. Who are you going for now? Still Van? Just got to make sure. Right, so Mal. Let's draw some first blood, my friend. Get him. Gore. Good. Critical hit. Holy shit, what a good start. Okay, take him down. Good luck. So that club's only going to do bruises. Oh my god, what a combat. What a showdown. We got a crappy knife out of it. That's fantastic. Steel club. Are you any good? Uh, no, not at all. Good lord. Um, incapable of social, animals cooking, plant work mining. Only capable of crafting artistic animals construction. All of which they are utterly garbage in. Um, you, my friend, might be a... Oh, you're incapable of mining? <clears throat> they actually are. Wow. Um, holy shit. So that means that... You're not even worth taking it as a prisoner. You are you you are only good for turning into an antiseptic corpse to breed the maggots for. What a sentence that just came out of my mouth, huh? Um, yeah, fuck you. You know what you're good for? A clothes delivery. My God, it's like Amazon Prime, except you have to knife the 
<laughs> knife the driver first. Uh, prioritize stripping. Let's just get some. Let's get those clothes. Thank you very much. Perfect. Um, are those any use to us? I mean, we can get them hauled if nothing else, huh? Now, I'd like your corpse to stay in the freezer. So I'm gonna get you to uh, Maddie six skill required. Oh God. Oh God. You're just gonna have to keep stabbing her just over and over. Just go for the go for the head. You should have gone for the head. This is ridiculous. Just like stabbing her in the leg over and over. Why won't you die? Oblivion style. Come on. Oh my God. This is this is tragic. Alexa. Help me. Okay, there we go. I wasn't, I wasn't going to quote that dead meme. You can't make me. Bring him over. Okay, get it to the freezer. We'll see if we can't do something useful with a corpse. Congratulations, you're officially more useful as a corpse than you were as a living human being. And that's a, that's the that's the best compliment anybody could receive her. Huh? Let's get that crap over as well. Like, clothes delivery. Also, got to admit that their legs were kind of useful for bringing those clothes over to our base. All right. I love attending social. That's cool. Wait, he's our warden? Really? Is he our best character at that? Oh, he is. Wow. Okay. Uh, Jill is 8 out of 20. Probably wasn't, actually. It probably wasn't our best warden. They're probably the same skill, but this guy, just because he's the only one that's been doing it, has built up his warden skill from, like, 8. Oh, my God. Great, you load it by a point. Only another 20 days, and we're good. Fantastic. Right, let's be back up, team. So when Jilt wakes up and finally decides to actually pull his finger out and build some buildings... Hang on, who's our builder right now? Oh, everybody. Um, 9 out of 20. 9 out of 20. You know what? I'm gonna take these guys off for construction. We've got them set to deliver anyway. There's no reason to have them on construction. There we go. That way we're also guaranteeing that our best constructor is always going to be the one doing the construction. We've got the quality builder mod that basically does that anyway. But obviously with certain things, it's going to be faster just to let the other guy do it home. The other two can focus on delivering. Also, we've run the risk of, you know, wasting resources if we get someone who's garbage to uh, to build our things. Who is our builder then? That would be a Van. Not assigned to constructing. Excuse me? Oh, it's... What the fuck have I done there? Mal is our builder. And I set it to Van? Well, that's horribly confusing. Um, I mean, they're both fine at building, I guess. Oh, actually, it's kind of useful, more useful him doing that than what animals, which is skilled at. Sure, get to work. The other guy's cooking meals, so I can absolutely justify having this guy as the builder while the other guy is, you know, saving our goddamn lives. There we go. Problem solved. Okay, loading mention. So what is it we need? It's like 7 point something something times... 7.62 times 39 Soviet. Right, cool. So we go over to here. We go to the 7 point blah, blah, blah times... I'm just going to have it Soviet? Uh, that one, I think it was. 7.62 times 39 Soviet. Uh, we're going to drop that on the floor and we're going to do that, uh, until we've got X. Now, because of the, if you guys didn't watch last series, because of the assignment system added by Combat Extended, we can basically, ju we don't need to set, like, our pause value at the bottom. It'll naturally pause by the amount of bullets that they can pick up from the stop power, right? So I'm going to set this to, like, um, let's set this to, like... 500. That seems pretty good. And we don't need to pause it. Uh, we can drop down the floor if we want. And then they can have however many bullets, but, you know, we're always going to have a spare amount and stockpile as well. So let's go to the assignment tab and actually set that up then. So current loadout is is nothing. So what I'm actually going to do is do no, new loadout, and we're going to call this basic. Uh, then we'll say you can have two meals and no drugs. That I'm going to give to everybody. Because that kind of makes some sense, huh? Um, good. And then we're going to make a new loadout. And then we're going to call this... Was it SKS, I believe the gun was called? Yeah, it absolutely was. All right, and then we'll say two meals. So we'll just make this a permutation of the last one. Two meals, SKS. And then we want to say... Preferably... Oh, wait. Can we not make uh, armor-piercing rounds for this one, huh? Uh, so... Soviet. Yeah, no, we can only make full metal jacket. Okay, fine. Don't have to worry about then. Basically, like the, the one-size-fits-all bullet, huh? So we want to go back to the assignment tab and actually give those guys that then. So, um, excuse me. Uh, so which one is it? It's Van and Mal. SKS, SKS. We're going to edit that one and just say any ammo, I guess. So how much ammo? I'm just sort of judging it by the bulk still. Like 100 bullets. How much would that add to their bulk? 16 points. So what are they at now? 12. So if we give them 100 bullets, that's only taking them up by 4 bulk. Um... That also determines, obviously, how much they can carry. I think that's too much. For a semi-auto weapon, 100 bullets seems like a, a lot, huh? So let's go for, like, 60? That seems okay. Let's go for 60 bullets and sort of just see how we do with some of our raids, uh, you know, with with that in mind. So as we're only making 60 bullets, we should probably do it some, some better multiple then. Um, do, like, 300? That's actually... Works kind of well then. Sure, let's do that. And that way they'll all, always have 60 each, and then they'll have 300 in storage. And then when they pick that one up, it will, uh, or we could set it to like on pause when there's only 60 left in storage or something like that. So a full inventory is worth. There's a lot of ways you could do this, but I, I just kind of like this because it's the most straightforward, huh? Right, can we get this harvest in before the 6th of September? So the corn is not going to be grown. It's just not going to happen. What about the bamboo? Oh, the cloth would be the important one. It's going to be close. It actually might be okay. 
Let's just keep a close eye on things and see how it goes. I'm a little bit concerned now. So it's smithing, I think, that is for bullets, isn't it? Um, let's take a look here. Crafting. Sorry? Not signed to smithing. Oh, shit, that's smelting, you bloody idiot. Okay, right, let's try that again. Uh, oh, well, obviously, we've got a very clear, a clear choice for who our smith should be. Don't know if it affects work speed or whether there's a chance of failure or anything like that associated with it, but we will go for that one. All right, come on, make me some ammo, my boy. That can always be top priority. I think having ammo to, you know, defend yourself with and not die should be a much better priority. I've literally been on the chair under him. That's, that's called teamwork right there. That's some RimWorld teamwork. Nice. Oh, we actually made that in no time. Holy shit, he's already done? Well, that was good. Okay, that worked out perfectly. And now we can hunt. This is fantastic. Now we can actually hunt. We've got, we've got 14 meals in storage, but now we can do something a bit better about that. Something we might want to do as well is build a dedicated corpse freezer. Um, so I'm actually going to do that. <laughs> I'm going to do that so they don't get super upset about constantly seeing corpses. And in fact, we'll just build it like that so that it's not connected up to the main base whatsoever. Right, so we want to probably probably go down to like corpses, human-like corpses, untick that. Uh, I think go to this one and then clear all. Go critical and human-like corpses. Are we allowing mechanoids in there? We should be. Now we need to also build a dedicated storage stockpile because our storage is full, right? We've, we've just completely rammed it full. Um, where are we going to build that though? It needs to be obviously close to the base. We could also carry on sort of this, you know, this area we're building in right now and do something kind of similar to that wouldn't hurt. Oh, that seems okay. Um, then they've got this little walkway as well. We've apparently got enough slate for that or, or marble. We really do. Wow, we actually do. Nice. This marble has worked out kind of well. I think I've got the jobs balanced down fairly decently this time, huh? Besides all the idleness of them just sort of like kicking around really doing nothing. That's not helped out too much. Right, build the roof area over that. And then we'll also build it over this one. All right, and we'll get a couple of doors. We'll put one just like either side just for posterity's sake. There we go. Okay, sure. So this can be our main stockpile. So I'm going to copy this one over. And we can actually do something useful with the fridge as well, thankfully. Right, so just expand all that out, and then, excuse me, I need to copy this one. This is going to be a fairly heavy admin episode for, for fairly obvious reasons. We, we've sort of half done a lot of things, but there we go. We're, we're basically back on track now. All right, so, main. Let's take a look. Gunsmithing is fairly irrelevant. We've got, all we needed was bullets out of that. We've got the bullets. I'm almost happy to go, just go straight for microelectronics, especially because we need trade ships to bring us the plasteel and the gold. I think that's going to be the most likely way of getting it, short of the, the falling... Spaceship parts is still going to be something very likely to, to provide that for us. But, I mean, just traders. The earlier we get a trade beacon, the more, you know, the more likely we're going to be to have that gold and plasteel that we need before, you know, before we actually need it to, to build the multi-analyzer. Let's get this garbage out of here. Let's start the, the hauling job as well. Um, haul urgently. And there we go. Okay, perfect. So let's designate some shit to hunt. Now we've spent all this time and effort getting bullets and ammo and everything. So what have we got that looks tasty on the menu today? What are these things? A chipmunk? A hedgehog? What was I going to feed anybody? I suppose that's the one downside to this community animals project, right? I had so many just tiny little creatures. Like we had that gecko before we got these. They're going to provide no meat, but they're still going to use the same amount of spawns on the map. So what could have spawned there instead? Like a gigantalope? What the fuck is a gigantalope, though? Um, oh, hello. Oh, I remember these things. They're, they're tapped like, what, like a psychic wave or some shit. Um, once designed as bigger, more powerful variants of the muffalo, ideal pack beast carries more weight in their body. They're they mammals. They have pneumatized bones. They have hollow spaces within them. Okay, cool. Um, oh, that's just it. Except that there's some, some horribly genetically engineered beast of a creature. Nothing to worry about then. Um, Alright, let's take a look at something else. What else have we got in just the... I'm just going to do the wild list and see what I recognize. I feel like a sand squid is not going to give the best meat. I mean, donkey's not bad. What's a low chance of, of attacking? Um, well, that thing's got a high chance of attacking. What is it? It's just a fucking beaver. That's just a beaver, my guy. You can't give it the name Cast Castorides when it's just a beaver. <laughs> Get out of here with that shit. What have we got? We've got hares. Um, Ibex rams, I saw. Where were they? Oh, we've got wild boars as well. That's probably the safest bet. Let's, let's kill those things. Kind of surprised wild boars only have a 2% chance of, uh, of attacking. That's crazy. That's the same as a ram. Boars are, like, famously quite vicious, aren't they? Okay, alpaca get those as well. We're not going to hunt the panda just on moral and ethical grounds. Although, if winter sets in, morals go out the window and pandas go into my tum. So, that's uh, that, that we're going to swap out for. If you guys want to start hunting, that would be fantastic. Appreciate it. Oh, of course, it's an eclipse. Me thinking, what the fuck are they awake at nighttime? My God. Just that, that poor thing stood no chance. That ibex I'm absolutely glad. What else we got kicking around here? Um, donkeys. Let's hunt those donkeys as well. Let's go to the animals tab and just kill as much as we goddamn can. This is America. Uh, get out of here. Right, there we go. Um, Sanskrit 2% chance to attack. Yeah, maybe not. Pandas only have 3%. That makes me kind of sad. That's, that's just a sad sight, isn't it? 
Oh, ganders. Uh, ganders are gooses. Lady gooses, I think. Uh, then gooses are gooses. What are men? We've got turkeys. A tortoise has a higher chance to attack than a turkey. Whoever made this has clearly never seen a freaking turkey in their life. Um, at least some tasty, tasty guinea pig on a stick. Oh, yeah. What's a ferret jill? Oh, they're just ferrets. Been attacked by a quail hen. That's not much of a surprise either. Quail hens are fucking vicious. All right. I'm speaking from personal experience with like 90% of these things. Maybe I'm just unlucky. There we go. Perfect. Hey, eclipse is ending. It's weird that Job can't move around in the eclipse if it's sunlight that hurts him, but he's still set to sleep for those arbitrary times, right? Maybe it is done by a sleep schedule rather than anything else. Because it is 6 till 6. Um, so what time is it now? It's like 4 in the afternoon. Uh, is a tester for you. We're just going to say work and see if he just immediately springs to his feet. No, he doesn't. Okay. I guess he just has to sleep 6 till 6 no matter what. Kind of just hard-coded for vampires, huh? Oh, okay, yeah, well, that kind of sucks. Um, well, back to sleep for you then, little job. Cool. This has been pretty good. Let's get this... You know what? I'm not calling it yet. Let's get this finished first. Let's, let's get this base actually finished. Then I'm then I'm happy to call things here. I want, I want to get something massively measurable before we're done for today. Okay. So Joe was going to get this done in no time at all because he is obviously like the supreme builder. Why is he building like that? What did he build like one here, one here, one here? That was so strange. What a weird building style. But now we need a new dumping stockpile. I seem to be putting these goddamn things down every 30 seconds. Um, I suppose we could put the chunks out here, huh? Uh, chunk. There we go. And then we could just put a door into the base, I guess, from the... Oh, we already have one. It's not the most convenient, granted, but it's, you know, better than having them out the front here slowing us down kind of constantly, huh? Get to work, little jolt. Oh, God, I thought it was another raid then because it was slowing down. Oh, God, it is slowing down quite a lot. I don't know if this is coming across in the video at all. I'll have to watch it back later. Very weird. Okay, team. Uh, get to building, my friend. So he's obviously cooking. That's fine. He's hunting. That's fine. I'm going to lower hunting for Van just so he can start work on building. So we've got a lot of one-priority jobs. That's never too ideal. Let's do that instead. There we go. All right. Um, you get to work. So we've got constructing. If he can't cook, he's going to build. That seems appropriate. Rich level 11 and cooking. And then we are building slightly onto Swamp here. Kind of a pain in the ass, obviously, because you need to put down those foundations. This is good. I'm, I'm pretty happy with how that's worked out. Do you want to get some lights in the stockpile? Probably not. I mean, we could probably also double it up as a workroom as well. It's kind of how this is trending because, you know, as we when we recruit this person, we'll probably put their bed in here as well. Um, and obviously, you know, having your crafting room right immediately next to your stockpile is pretty convenient when you just want to chuck shit straight on the floor. Van Leach reached level 10 in construction. Good job, Van. What's your last name? Van Trunner and Mal Pomry. And obviously, Jolt Vondel as well. F incredible names. Now all we need is crap boost, and we've got the set of just the, 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 the quadrility of garbage names. Speaking of garbage names, you might want to check out my Game of Thrones series. That's also incredibly garbage names right now. Ovean, what would you call the one today? Ovean, uh... Volani? That was particularly bad. That scares the shit out of me every time. Stop that. Okay, what level is he then? Um, oh, shit. We can almost go for Misform. Two points available, we can get Misform. Oh my god, next episode we start war on the goddamn war form. Nice, I want to check, test out Misform before we uh, call it. Oh, it just actually turns into Mist. I don't know what I expected here. Oh, it's kind of like humanoid shaped Mist though. Just uh, sneaking up on her. Mist is drinking my blood. How the hell does that work? Thank you for watching. Hope you guys have enjoyed this episode. We're, hopefully things are going to pick up very, very quickly. I mean, they will, obviously, pick up very quickly, very soon. Let's give a shout-out to the Insane Top Tier Level patrons who made this series possible in the first place. My lists are going to take a while to update because Patreon is being incredibly slow, and I'm also going to be away for a couple of days. So, those of you who are on this list, congratulations. You're going to get shouted out for a couple more days, and you might have, like, come to Patreon or whatever. Or there might be people to be expected. Those guys I apologize profusely to. Not a lot I can do. Patreon are being very slow on the ball this time around. Big shout out to Alpha Scuff, Asuna Kirito, Atmosis, Average Gamer 419, Banyal, Sedini, Conspiracy, Crazy Pat Croesus, Danny Good, Donald, Eric B, Escape, Fukuno Vasquez, Fungus King, Gogolus, Harik, Haydog, Jimbo, Josh Lindine, Tesla, Justin Wallace, Caden Carter, Michael Mullen, Muskrat, Fall, Nathan Flores, Necrophilum, Pelvis Presley, Surf the Swede, Sorogon, Toby Cruz, Tom Terry 18, Tyler Kendall, Vacuous Backus, and Zazzy7011. Thank you all for your support in the Santa Levels on Patreon. Thank you for making this channel possible in the first place. Hope you guys are enjoying a little bit of Vampire Rimworld, even though it hasn't been particularly vampire. Remember when I said at the start, we're going to start on Castle Jilp? And how did that go? Terribly. Thank you for remembering. Shout out as well, of course, to Asaro, Adam Person, Akari, Andrew Wilson, all of this was UK, Arachnid44, Batman's Max, Ben Troke, Sedini, Chris, David Van Diepen, Don, Don Cunning 2 and 7, Fraser Brennan, Gabriel Faulkner, Gabriel Van Ders, Gaz, GDWK Run, Genji Zerko, Gray, Haji Dumar, Hancock, Harry McGowan, Icy the Great, Israel, Jay Lara, James Barnes, Yoran Debris, Jessica Smith, 
John Holiday, Johnny No, Jordan Campbell, Joseph Beer, Justin Plot, Justin Walters, Lemon Stark, Luan and Thomas, Matthew, Nathan Forrest, Nathaniel Lindbergh, Nick, Noah Gallimore, Nixie, Pan Samu, Panther Pearl, Smirtworm, The Insane Pickle, Venom Meow, Will Wade, Wolfie, and Zico 2. Thank you all for your support.